Put your hands together for Chris Washenberger. Thank you. That's right. Um, I'm going to continue a history lesson up here based on kind of bouncing off Chris. I'm going to say why distillation is the finest form of protest, and American history is built on it. Protest, distillation, America. It's what we do. Distillation is simple. Fine alcohol products go in here. Heat comes up, takes them around. Trickle, trickle, trickle. Out comes booze, motherfuckers. It's booze. Thank God for booze. Stills come in all shapes and sizes. They can be beautiful, wonderful, copper. Or they could be this motherfucker. It is... I've heard that it's terrifying. I've heard that fire comes out. You gotta watch out. Distillation goes way back to our friends, the ancient Greeks. Goes through Egypt, goes through Persia. The Italians perfected booze making. Flour extracts, booze in Italy. My lovely wife, spaghetti, and Italy. Like, it's great. Booze came to the New World through uh, lovely, wonderful places, the sugar cane. We all drink rum. It was the thing we did. But there was one thing about rum. Oh, shit! Rum was built on the backs of slaves. That's right. But this is kind of a, we're going to point this out. This is step one. Booze is always tight in America because our founding boozers tended to oppress folks a little. Regardless, George Washington, actually a fairly good guy, produced gigantic amounts of whiskey, and uh, whiskey became the drink after the Revolutionary War. The Revolutionary War left us a little bit of debt, $75 million. And uh, Alexander Hamilton said, hey, why don't we just tax whiskey? We all drink it. We're rich. We produce it. We drink it. We'll put an excise tax on it. Nutters, religious and health-wise, jumped on board with that. They said, temperance is the right thing. It makes you... This guy, Benjamin Rush, says it makes you curse. It makes you slutty. And uh, it may actually make you explode. Anyway... Mount Vernon over here, rich, out in the western Pennsylvanias and Carolinas and everything else, poor. These guys got fucked. Because whiskey, easy way to make your grain into something profitable, became the real cash industry. So essentially, their luxury tax at the top level became an, excise, or an income tax down at the bottom. So they were taxing double on their grain. And it sucks. Essentially, these Western, these Western guys, yeah, they started to really just scrape and, and, you know, it felt bad. So they negotiated, but negotiations as always fail. Then they took to the famous American sport, tarring and feathering. They fucking loved it. So this went on for a while. George Washington busted some shit up. And everybody from all these places moved to the new state of Kentucky. Look, I'm not a big fan of the South either, but fucking Kentucky does what it needs to do for us. It's the, it's the breadbasket of booze. Anyway, it got repealed. Everything happened. hundred and some odd years later, these fuckers did it again. Suck it. Yes, very much. But... Everything wasn't all bad because we still had illicit distillers floating around. Try this. Try this. Don't drink. Put your beers down. You, Josh, put it down. Everybody up here, put it down. Try doing that for 13 years. You won't do it. People put these stills up. They had red cars. And it was illicit. It was a thing that you did. You drank illicit booze. It was a protest. Finally, it comes like this. But the world has a taste for illicit booze. That's important. It still continues today. My great-grandfather himself ran booze after prohibition. It's, it's a thing you do, and we still do it today. These are commercial companies. But down deep in the heart there's still illicit booze being made. I know it's out there, and I know some of... I know, 
I don't know. Anyway, what I'm saying is if you drink Colorado whiskey or you drink from a jar that somebody just put together, you're doing the right thing for America. <laughs>